Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a Chromebook Plus from HP. This is their Chromebook Plus 14. And as its name suggests, it's got a nice big 14 inch display on board, along with some good performance, decent battery life, and a pretty reasonable price. I really like Chromebooks for people that need a computer but don't need anything fancy, and I'm pretty pleased with what I see in this one. And we're gonna step through it all and see what it's all about in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this Chromebook came into the channel on loan from Google. So we're done with this, it goes back to them and then presumably back to HP. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook Plus is all about. Now the price point on this is $529. They do have another version of the 14 inch Chromebook that costs less, but because it doesn't have as much memory as this one has, it doesn't meet the Chromebook Plus specification, and therefore you don't get the added features. Now, some of the added features on Chromebook Plus is that they now have AI writing tools that are built into the operating system. So you can right click on some text and have it uh, proofread it or enhance it or change it. It also has some really nice built in webcam controls that allow you to add blur or custom backgrounds on any application or website that makes use of the camera. And there's a lot of other little features that they have already in Chromebook Plus and more that'll be coming in the near future. So they do a little bit more than your standard Chromebook. And I think those added features will get more valuable over time. The big thing with this one is that in addition to getting some of those features, you also get a year of their Gemini Advanced AI service, which normally costs $20 a month. And along with that AI service, you also get two terabytes of cloud storage which you can use with any of your devices that are attached to your Google account. So there is a good value proposition on Chromebook Plus here. For example, that Gemini Advanced subscription that you get for a year normally costs $240. You get some features that are beginning to really differentiate themselves on Plus versus a regular Chromebook. And this Chromebook will be supported through June of 2033 with updates. So as those new features get added over time, they will be adding more to Chromebook Plus this one will get it for almost a decade, which is pretty good, I think. And then of course you have the performance advantages of a Chromebook Plus over a regular Chromebook because they do have to meet a certain hardware specification. And to that end, this one has an i3 N305 processor from Intel. This chip is interesting because it is a lower end chip. It actually comes from the same line of chips that go in those cheap mini PCs we see on the channel here quite frequently. But this one is a little higher performing and it's still very good on power efficiency. And I was surprised that it doesn't feel like a low end chip at all. The performance on this, as you'll see in a little bit, is very good for doing the sorts of things that you would do on a Chromebook. Additionally, it has eight gigabytes of RAM, which is the minimum spec for Chromebook Plus, And it has 128 gigabytes of UFS storage. So it's adequate for the types of things that Chromebook users will do and I found it to be quite snappy at doing those tasks. And again, we'll look at performance in a little bit. The display is 1080p. It is a 14 inch display, as I mentioned. It runs at 300 nits of brightness. It's not great for creative work because it only meets about 62.5% of the sRGB color gamut, which is something that professionals need uh, for better color grading. 62.5% is not 100%, so it's probably best for doing basic work or uh, non-mission critical types of creative work that doesn't require very accurate colors. But to my eye, the screen looks great. The text is sharp. It's very readable. So I enjoyed uh, playing around with it over the last week here. The webcam is also very nice. This is a 1080p webcam. You've got a manual shutter here at the top to block the lens. As you can see here, the image quality looks spectacular for a cheap webcam that is. And what's also nice is that Chromebook Plus brings in some of these features at the OS level to do custom backgrounds and blurring without having to rely on whatever app you're using to do it. So uh, again, a decent little feature set here. That uh, lighting feature that you just saw is also something that's part of Chromebook Plus. And all in, I was pleased with the basic transportation here that works quite nicely. The speakers are okay on it. They are stereo, but they don't sound great for music, but they are more than adequate for doing work and conference calls. Build quality wise, this is all plastic. It doesn't feel all that cheap though. So it again, has that basic transportation feel, but it doesn't feel like you're cutting corners on anything. 
It weighs 3.2 pounds or 1.45 kilograms. Thanks to that Intel processor inside, you get about eight to 10 hours of battery life and it does charge up pretty quick on its USB-C power ports. And you actually get two of those on here. You've got one on the left and one on the right. What's nice about these USB-C ports is that they are full service ports. So they, dis they support display output. They support data devices going in and you can plug power into either side of it. And you can use these with a docking station. That was something I tried out earlier. So it's nice to have some flexibility on those USB ports. For data devices, these support five gigabits per second, max, not 10. So if you are looking for better performing USB ports, you won't find them on this device, but it's good enough for, again, doing basic work tasks. Here you've got a headphone microphone jack. On the other side, you have a USB-A port. The display um, does need you to <laughs> hold down the keyboard deck to lift up, um, but beyond that, it feels pretty good. And this is about as far back as it goes. The keyboard feels nice as well. It's a basic HP Chromebook keyboard. The only thing I don't like about it is that the keys have some raised lettering on them. So you can feel the texture of each letter here and every key feels different as a result of that. So I'm not crazy about the raised printing on the keys. The keyboard is also not backlit and there's no biometrics to get in. So you can't use a fingerprint or a face to unlock it, but you can use a pin code, which will get you in a little bit quicker. The trackpad on this feels fine and about on par with what you would expect out of a computer at this price point. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, let's take a look at some web browsing to start things off here. We'll go to the nasa.gov homepage. And as you can see, everything is very responsive on here. I was very surprised that this lower end Intel chip is performing as well as it is. So I don't think you're gonna have any issues doing work, conference calls, web browsing, word processing, email, all the basics that this computer is designed for. I think it's going to handle quite well. And it also handles media quite nicely. I've got my YouTube channel up here with a 1080p 60 video. It dropped two frames when it first got started, but otherwise it has been able to keep up just fine. Another great feature of these Intel chips is just how well they work with video. And this one, of course, is no exception. One thing that I wanna note though is that I recommend running your video applications like Netflix and YouTube through a web browser because one of the things that'll happen here is that you will be directed to install Android apps off the Google Play Store, which also works on Chromebooks. The problem is, is that the Android apps don't allow you to play video at the full resolution of the display. So Netflix and Disney Plus and others will look better if you access those services through the web browser and not through the app. So as long as you're using the browser, you're gonna get a great experience out of this. I do hope at some point that Google updates the DRM on the Android side of the Chromebooks here to allow better resolutions, but for now, stick to the web browser. And on version 3.0 of the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 10.2, and that puts this machine pretty close to what you might see out of a much more expensive device like that Asus ZenBook you can see above it. So it really holds its own performance-wise, especially on web applications like you might encounter with Google Docs and the many other things that you might run on a Chromebook. Also take a look at the last score you see on the list there. That's an Asus Chromebook CM30, which kind of represents where the base level Chromebooks are these days. And that one came in at only 3.13. So that's where Chromebook Plus really differentiates itself in that you'll know you'll get something that performs a lot better than the base models do for not that much more money. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Chromebooks do run the Google Play Store, which means you can install a lot of Android games like Mario Kart here. And they've recently added the ability to map key controls to the touch screen. So you could play these games a little better than you could before. So the Android games I tested, most of them ran okay. The one issue you might run into though, is that some games are designed for ARM processors, not Intel chips. And as a result, they don't run even though you can install them. So for example, I tried playing Genshin Impact on here, which is a very popular Android game. It kept crashing, I couldn't get it to run. But some of the casual titles like Mario Kart and others do run just fine. Additionally, these do very well at game streaming. 
So here you can see me playing with my game controller and streaming a game from the GeForce Now service from NVIDIA. It played back perfectly, even over Wi-Fi. So if you are streaming games from cloud services like this or Xbox or others, you should have a very good experience with it, provided your Wi-Fi is strong in the room that you are in. And on the 3D Mark Wildlife Gaming Benchmark test, we got a score of 4,381 on the regular version of that test and 1,035 on the extreme version. And this is where this N305 processor differs from the other i3s we've looked at in the past that were based on the more expensive architecture. You can see those two Chromebook Pluses at the top do much better graphically because they have a little bit more of a robust processor. Even though they are both i3s, they are very different in their architecture, and you can see where things kind of differentiate a little bit. But in day-to-day -day use, they perform pretty close to each other. So if you're looking to play games, a Chromebook is probably not your first choice anyhow, but just know that this i3 is not as powerful as some of the i3s we've seen in prior generations when it comes to graphics. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is its ability to run Linux applications. You get a terminal window and you enable Linux in the settings of your Chromebook, and all of your favorite Linux apps, most of them are free, will run just fine in here. But you can also install graphical applications like the awesome LibreOffice, which gives you a full-on office suite for free that runs locally on the computer and doesn't require a web browser. So you can save these files directly on the machine here. As you can see, they load up and run very quickly, much faster than they do on some of the lower end Chromebooks. And LibreOffice is a very complete office suite too. So I'm pretty happy with the general performance on this machine, even though graphically it is a bit lower than what we've seen out of some other Chromebook Pluses for the things that matter, which is the kind of work that's designed to be done on this device. I'm very happy with how snappy and responsive it is. Eight gigs of RAM is probably fine for a Chromebook. 16 gigs would give you a little bit more to play with insofar as having you know, Linux apps and Android apps running together on the machine. But overall, I think for the price point, this is a very good value. And that value proposition is only going to get better as they continue to add features to differentiate these Plus devices from the regular ones. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.